Todd Martin and this is my first video I'm doing for you guys. Alright, um, this video will be posted on two places. It will be on uh, YouTube and on the Solid Shell Security blog. No, I don't want a new document. Alright, in this video uh, I'm actually going to make a small uh, web series about uh, HTTP servers. Alright. Um, before I go all in, first I'm going to say that I'm going to be doing this in Python 2.7. So if you do not have Python, um, you can download it on, I believe it's uh, python.org. And uh, it's got a .exe uh, Mac. It's got executables for uh, all the operating systems. But if you're running Mac or um, Linux, Python comes default. You just need to make sure that if you're following along with my uh, tutorials and you're doing everything exact and you're still getting errors on stuff, um, you make sure that you are using Python 2.7 because other versions may not be compatible with the version that I'm running. Alright, so like I said, uh, simple HTTP server. Now before I go in and actually write a single line of code in this video, before I write a single line of actual code, I'm going to uh, start by what I call prototyping the program. And that's basically just walk through and uh, look at everything I need, what I want the program to do. Um, for the uh, HTTP server, we're not exactly looking for like a server you would actually employ on a website because we're not going to get into um, the HTML and everything. We're just going to create a simple HTTP server that is going to display a directory of files and you can navigate around the directory. First things first, whenever you look at servers, and this is uh, big in the Unix field, this is how computing is thought, is that everything is looked at as a file. It's the same thing with uh, servers, everything is looked at as a file. Now, an HTTP server, what it simply does is it uh, allows external access the files. Um, believe it or not, might be kind of hard to believe, um, whenever you pull up google.com, what it does is your computer goes through, connects through all these servers and handshakes and all that. I'm not going to get into all that, but essentially it connects to the server that google.com is on. It requests for information, then the information is sent back, and web pages are usually files everything you do through your internet browser is usually through files. So that's what we're going to be doing, simply allowing external files allow external access to files, yeah, allowing uh, files to be accessed externally which means uh, not exactly from your computer. Um, I'm not going to get into about pushing ports and actually putting it out on the World Wide Web. Um, if you do this, it should be available. You know, if you're doing it, if you have more than one computer in your uh, Wi Fi within your local area network, you can start the server on one. You can hop on another computer and look up the IP address for the computer that the server's on in the local area, and you can access, you can go to it and access the files. Uh, so basically, a uh, very, very basic um, file server, file sharing server in a way, except you really don't get to upload files from other computers in the house. Um, so everything is looked at as a file. So here we have, well, this is going to be server. All right, so we have our server here. It's going to be the connection of the client. We'll say the server's IP address is 1. The client IP address is going to be 96. So, domains are basically IP addresses. They point to IP addresses. So, google.com really points to some IP address. And that IP address is the server. 
So here we have, we have the server with the IP address of one, the client with the IP address of 96. Now, these aren't real IP addresses. These are just hypothetical for example only. Usually IP addresses um, are one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, IPv4, which means that there are four blocks. And each block is like eight bits or four bits, and it equals like 128 bytes. And now they got IPv6, but we're not going to get into all that. So on IP address one, we are going to allow access to files from from other computers and on the client side hypothetically 96 we are going to access the files now to get into you know how do we how do we decide which files we're going to access is very very simple it's what's called the uh, document root and this will be the main directory so whatever you set your document root to that's the directory of files it's going to show. So as an example we pull up here if we launch a server and we set my server folder here as the root document all of these files are going to be accessible. Next thing we need is a port. The port computer has like 65,300 35 ports. It's 65,000 some ports. Um, the port is basically uh, where traffic goes in and out. Certain ports have certain purposes, like port 80 is usually used for HTTP, port, you know, etc. So we're not going to go into all that. So this is basically what you need to know. And I'm going to run a very basic implementation of a simple server using Python, which believe it or not only needs one line of code. But I'm going to get to a problem with it. Python m simple HTTP server. Congratulations, we have launched a HTTP server on port 8000. Now, whenever we open this up, we're going to go to localhost, which would be our own IP address. And we're going to go to port 8000 to connect to a certain port of website. Use the, uh, just had a mind blank, but the two dots, and you type 8000. Bingo. All right. The problem is, is with this, you don't really have control over what port you're going to use. To set the document route, you actually have to navigate to where you want the document root to be, which means if I want it to be my server folder on my desktop, I have to actually go to that directory. Make sure we got the right. Then we have to launch it. Now whenever we go to localhost, bingo. And of course we can click on files. There's the image I have. Uh, this will download the text document which says this is my server. Big surprise. Alright, next one I'm actually going to get into writing a Python script and talking a little bit more about everything. Um, so this is it for this video. And also one quick thing, whenever you launch this, as you can see it does log the connections and everything where it shows it to you. But to exit out to stop the server, you will click Control C. Hold on, I got click in the window, Control C. And it does a keyboard interrupt in the Python shell. Which is also another thing um, I need to get to real quick. Um, for Windows users, once you have Python installed, you need to set your environment pass. You can simply Google search that or search it up on YouTube. There's a couple hundred videos on that. But whenever you get that all said and done, you type Python, you invoke the shell. But 
to run this little program, we're not actually going to go into the shell. We're just going to run Python M simple HTTP server. All right.